Hi, this is Joe Bassett. I'm the president and CEO of Dawn Equipment. And today I'm going to make you a quick video explaining the features of the Furrotechnic control system. This control system is a complete planter control system and has many, many features. For the vast majority of you that will be using it on a strip till unit or a planter, you'll be using primarily the downforce control aspects of it. And so I'll highlight everything it does, but um, realize that the downforce control is really a subset of the entire control system. So I'm sitting in my office at a desktop, but there is a small planter which is sitting out in the yard of the shop, uh, a four row planter that is turned on right now. And so I'm gonna use that in order to demonstrate it, but it's just sitting on a bed of snow. And so it's not exactly operating the way a normal planter would in the field. So bear with me if some things look like they're not operating exactly normally because the gauge wheels are not really seated on the ground and so on and so forth. But to begin, so this user interface on my computer will look exactly the same as it will look on an iPad or an Android tablet if you're sitting in the cab. Now that tablet that you're using to control it is connected by Wi-Fi to a controller which is back on the planter which is called the telematics controller and that controller has memory and it comes with the GPS puck and it communicates with the row unit controllers and it also has a SIM card installed. Well that SIM card uh, allows you to move data back and forth and get the map tiles for the mapping and it also allows us to have a remote support and diagnostic feature that allows the experience of controlling it from your desktop application to be essentially identical to what it would look like on a tablet. So uh, to begin, in the upper right hand corner of the screen, you have the uh, icon with the four squares. That is the system overview. Okay, and all of the data fields that appear on system overview are things that give you a general picture about the performance of the planter. If the, if the particular data field corresponds to something that has row by row control, then it's the average across all the rows. Uh, so to begin with, you have the system pressure, which it tells you the pressure coming from the tractor and it will alarm at you if it's too low. Your seed rate, your true downforce, which is the actual downforce rationalized with the applied downforce and the uplift um, uh, rationalized into pounds. You have your seed depth, you have your gauge wheel load, you have your closing wheel depth, you have your ride quality, you have your uplift pressure, you have your closing wheel downforce, your hydraulic row unit downforce pressure in PSI, you have your row cleaner pressure for the GFX hydraulic row cleaner, you have your closing wheel applied pressure, your singulation percentage, your skip percentage, your multiple percentage, your weather data, your ground speed, your area covered, your percentage completion of the field, and your time remaining to complete at your current speed. So some of these things are just data fields and some of them are actually things you can control. So for instance, seed depth, I can anywhere where you see this pencil icon is something that's controllable. So I can change the seed depth there, or I can change my gauge wheel load. The closing wheel depth right now is actually in an intelligent control mode, but if it was in the manual control mode, you could actually change that too. The closing wheel depth, we actually have a system that makes it fully automatic called the ICS, the intelligent closing wheel system, which more or less intelligently decides how much pressure it's going to apply. Now, the Dawn technology does not control the pressure of the closing wheels. It actually controls how deep the closing wheels are going in the ground. The ride quality, it is an expression of the roughness or bouncing of the row unit. Now, bear in mind that we can make this number read however we want it to read. So the number that we give you to read for ride quality, we'll have to play around with that in order to make it something that gels with the number that you're used to from other manufacturers where they, they this is not in units of G's or acceleration. This is just an arbitrary unit that the manufacturers uh, choose to give you, okay? And then what we'll have here is it'll just give you a, a readout that says smooth, medium, or rough. Now, there, here's the uplift pressure in PSI. Notice that the uplift is uh, says IAS high pressure. It means that it's being managed by the IAS system, which is the intelligent automation system right now, meaning you're not actually choosing the uplift pressure. The closing wheel downforce in pounds. 
the cylinder pressure, which is the actual cylinder pressure, uh, which is running very high. So what we'll do right now is we'll just turn this down to we'll just turn this down to a lower number. We'll just make it come down lower. Um, the GFX row cleaner. So here you can control your row cleaner from within the same interface. So you can just move the slider or input a number and you can control your row cleaner pressure from inside of there. You have your closing wheel pressure and hydraulic PSI, your singulation percentage and so on and so forth. Now your weather data, this is actually integrated through the mobile data plan, which comes with every system that we include with the IBM weather data application. So when you click on this, it will give you some temperature data, some weather. It will give you some soil moisture data and the forecast and also a soil temperature forecast, which is being generated uh, by a mobile data link with the IBM platform. Uh, you have your ground speed, your area covered, and your time to complete. So then every data field, which is a controllable thing, um, appears on this screen, which is your row unit detail screen, as a bar graph. And you can control them. If you prefer the bar graph screen, you can control the set points from inside of the the row unit detail screen too. The yellow line corresponds to the target and the black bar shows whether you're either above or below the target. And then there's a numerical value of uh, what the true um, data value is. And you've got a corresponding bar graph for every single thing that appears on the system overview screen. Continuing down, you have a, you go to the mapping screen and you can see here the Dawn factory and the planter, which is parked right outside, sitting in place. And you have, you can select the data field for every single uh, value, which is a uh, one of your data values. And you'll, you can log all of this data and export it to uh, whichever FMIS system you might have. This will export in ISO XML data format. Continuing down, now in the lower right-hand corner, it will tell you uh, whether the particular row is enabled or disabled because of the um, field boundary and the section control. The next uh, tab down is your jobs tab. We'll come back to that in a little bit. And the next tab down is your configuration tab. Here you can enable or disable the active closing system and you can enable or disable the autonomy function, the intelligent closing system. You can enable or disable the auto depth control. Set your channels, your control channels. Notice that every person who gets a reflex for a technical control system can also choose to integrate an automated wing weight transfer system. Okay, so it's not enabled on this particular small planter, but you can enable the wing weight transfer and then it will give you control over the wing weight transfer on your system overview screen, or you can put the wing weight transfer in automated mode, which is very useful on our strip tool units in particular. The GFX row cleaner, you can enable or disable the GFX row cleaner control your GPS setting, you can uh, change the polling period and the location of the antenna, the type of the antenna, set the row spacing, enable or disable the seed meter and set the number of holes in the particular seed meter disc that you have, change your sensor voltage range, tell the system whether you have are using a single lift switch or not, and you can reverse the switch polarity. Notice here, I'm gonna go ahead and disable the system and when I reverse the switch, lift switch polarity in the lower right hand corner, you see the icon which indicates the toolbar raised or lower status. Uh, lose the green box. That means that the system is now disabled because the toolbar is raised. And now I'll reverse it back on and re-enable it. Uplift control. You can select whether or not you're running the intelligent automation system. Wing weight transfer. You can choose whether or not you're running the wing weight transfer control. Ride quality assistant. Now the ride quality assistant is not enabled. We can go ahead and enable that, which is basically what it is, is it's using the ride quality in order to control other aspects of the down pressure automation control system, okay? Moving down here to the next tab, you have the row unit detail screen where you can select your different rows and it'll give you some ability to set that individual row into a manual state should you want to put it into a manual state it'll tell you the firmware version loaded on that particular controller the strain gauge offset value in that particular row unit and you can even change the row number that's assigned to that particular controller fields tab is where you load your fields in 
So you can uh, basically select here, create a new field. And when you create a new field, you can name it and choose a particular field boundary in either shapefile or GeoJSON format. And you can create a particular field. Crops is where you will add a particular crop type. You could call it corn or any, basically any seed variety is what you're loading here. And these are all the things that will be used in order to create a particular job for your data system. Calibration is where we calibrate the gauge wheel load. We calibrate the closing wheel depth and the seed depth system. Manual override, if there's a particular situation that results in you wanting to put the system into a manual state, you can enable manual control on all the rows. You can create a preset. So a preset is any controllable aspect of the system, whether it be seed depth, row cleaner, down pressure, you name it, you can assign that to a particular preset, like a preset on your radio, and it will put a button on your system overview screen. And when you hit that button, it will move the entire system to that preset value um, immediately. That can be really helpful in all sorts of situations. In fact, I like to even create a preset that maxes out the down pressure level immediately so that if you start getting stuck in the mud with a strip till system, you can hit one button and it maxes out the pressure in order to carry the weight of the frame with the row units, distributing the weight to help you get out of a mud spot. Split rows is where you would set up a split row planter and you can basically um, tell it which rows are uh, the inner plant rows. Preferences is where you would see your controller info, your the amount of storage space available on the telemetry controller. The available firmware update versions, you can remotely update the firmware from within this screen, factory reset, enter debug mode, restart controller, and so on and so forth. You can also change to a metric system, or you can change to the Ukrainian language, which is our only other language in the system right now. Visual preferences, you can change the uh, basically, for the mapping screen and a particular data field, you can change which colors correspond to which data values on the map. Mobile data, it will tell you that the mobile data is connected. Okay, so that basically gives you an overview of all of the different features inside of Reflex Ferrotechnic. Oh, I forgot one. In the lower right, you do see this red dot. That tells you whether a job is active. So if you um, are have created your field boundaries and if the system detects that you are inside of a field boundary and you're actually planting in the enabled state or running your strip till unit, it will prompt you to ask you to create a job. It needs you to create a job so that it can use that metadata to aggregate that data into a particular field so that when you export it into your FMIS, it exports in the correct way. Um, it, while you're running, a green line will appear around the outside of this red dot and will tell you your percentage completion of the particular job of the particular field. You do not need to have a field boundary to start or stop a job, but you should create a job if you're running your system and if you have the intention of exporting your data in the future. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call.